Abadada, Undele Brosontoli, Brosontoli Abada, Gatelia Abazide Kita, Ele Bezente Ketelia Abadada. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Esamantele Abada. Oh, receive the honor, Lord. Receive adoration, Lord. The adoration belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belong to you. All of the praises, my hallelujah belong to you. Adoration, my hallelujah belong to you. Exaltation, my hallelujah belong to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yes, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of the glory belongs to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All of the glory belongs to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All of the glory belongs to you. All of my glory, all of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of my worship belongs to you. All of my worship. All of my worship belong to you. All of my worship, all of my worship belong to you. All of the worship, all of the worship belong to you. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah, you are the man of war. Man of war, your mercies endure it forever and ever. Oh, we praise your holy name. Oh, we praise, oh, we praise your holy name, the God of, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, you are the man of war, man of war, your mercies endure it forever. And ever, oh, we praise your holy name. Yes, we praise, yes, we praise your holy name. Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God. How great thou art, immortal, immortal God, invisible God, immutable God, how great thou art, everlasting God, ever faithful one. Ever living God, how great thou art, immortal God, invisible God, immutable. 
incorruptible God, how great thou art. I honor you, O God. I honor you, O Lord. I honor you, my Lord. Today, I honor you, O Lord. I honor you, my Lord. I honor you, my God, today. I magnify, I honor you, O Lord. Yes, I honor you, my God. I honor you, my Lord, today. Masuma yanda yeke deleni amasabada. I honor you, my Lord. I honor you, my God. I honor you, my Lord, today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, foretaste of God. Born of the Spirit, was in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness. Lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior, praising my Savior all the day long. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Sadaba Yega Diriada. We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, my God. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are powerful. You are worthy, my King. You are powerful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, my God. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. 
Father, we exalt your name. We worship you. We thank you for the privilege to come and gather again at your feet today. Accept our praises. Accept all the adoration and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to the sixth day of our apostolic book study. For the end of your fast in Neymar through prayer ministry. How is your fast going? I hope you are going from strength to strength. I pray for renewal of strength. I pray that the Almighty God will rejuvenate and revive everything that is broken or dead in the name of Jesus. I pray for resurrection power to put on, to be put on everything, our work, our families, our marriages, our children, even our prayer altars in Jesus' mighty name. I declare newness on every side in Jesus mighty name i pray that our strength and our our spirit man is revived during this fast in Jesus mighty name father we exalt your name we worship you we magnify you we give you praise and glory Amen. We're studying the acts of the apostles as a ministry in view of what lies ahead in the coming year so that we can replicate the same exploit by God's grace and we are covering two chapters in the morning in our reading and praying and taking the communion. And in, we're doing the same in the evening, but in the evening we delve deeper into the study and then we pray and pray communion as well. So please, if you have not already done so, grab your bread and your wine because we'll be using it in the time of prayer. So without wasting time, let's quickly cover grounds as we read Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. We'll be reading chapter 11 and 12, but I will be discussing each chapter separately, just so that we don't lump things together. And so I encourage you to open with me to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, the New King James Version. The title of this discussion is Apostolic Shift, and you will see why when we are done. Yes, so let's read together. Acts 11, 1. Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners. And it came to me when I observed it intently and considered. I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed you must not call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, who said to him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? Verse 18, when they heard these things, they became silent and they glorified God saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Barnabas and Saul at Antioch. Now, those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad, and encouraged them all that with purpose of art they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, 
full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was so it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Relief to Judea. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in Jesus' mighty name. So this chapter started with a major rift between the church elders in Jerusalem and Peter. Remember that Peter is the appointed leader. Is the one that was handed the church over to by Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ clearly said it, that upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So many people refer to Peter as the first bishop or the archbishop of the church, the early church, the first century church. You can see that this chapter was a regurgitation of the previous chapter as Peter explained himself to the church elders at Jerusalem. If God sends you on errand, do it without seeking for man's approval. The approval can lead to divine disapproval. Because you will see here, the Bible says that the apostles and the brethren who were in Judea contended with Peter. <laughs> they told him, you went unto the uncircumcised men and ate with them. They accused him. And Peter started explaining himself to them. You don't owe anyone any explanation, especially if you are following divine mandates. It was a divine mandate, and it was clear from the previous reading that we had, the, re the previous chapter, and there was confirmation on both sides, from the Gentile and from the Jew. The key word in this very chapter, and I want you to pay attention to it, is that they contended. They contended with him. They could have asked him the explanation without contention. Like I said yesterday, I believe it was the reluctance of the Jewish church and the need for Peter to answer to this man that led to the major shift of power from the Jewish church to the Gentile church. You know that the Jewish church was led, the apostleship of the Jewish church was given to Peter. He should have been the apostle for the old churches, everything. Paul was supposed to answer to him. But because of this reluctance and division in the early church, it led to Paul being the apostle of the Gentile church. Can you imagine that? a proselyte, a new person, is a new bee, really. Peter was the oldie, goldie, he was the elder of the church. He was the one Jesus gave the authority to. But because of their division, there was a power shift. And that's why I titled this, uh, this reading, today's lesson, Apostolic Shifts. So it ought not to be so. So the church at Jerusalem wanted to attract only their kind. They had become ingrown. They were limiting the move of the spirit. And the sporadic growth that we witnessed from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, up to chapter 8, where Stephen was persecuted and killed. There was a massive growth, which, was, which is characteristic of the apostolic movement. And they were beginning to walk in the flesh and not the spirit. The church that started with one accord, the Bible said they were with one accord in one place. They became a disgruntled, fault-finding bunch of people. And it led to serious contentions between them and against them. Their inner squabbles led to massive onslaught against the church, as we can see in the next chapter. Whenever there is division and offense, you will start to see heads rolling, which we will see clearly in chapter 12. Despite all of the contentions and persecution, the church kept marching on, and the gates of hell could not prevail against them. The scattering that resulted from Stephen's death led to a positive outcome. The gospel, instead of being stopped, spread out like wildfire. In verse 19, we see the church scattered after the persecution of Stephen. They traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists. Remember, the Hellenists are the, are the Greeks. 
So they were preaching the Lord Jesus Christ to the Greek. And then the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned to the Lord. I pray that the hand of the Lord will confirm us as we spread through the nations in the coming year in Jesus' name. The Bible said that the news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent out Barnabas to go oversee them. And when he came and he saw the grace of God upon them, he was glad and encouraged them as they should, uh, that they should continue in the Lord. And the Bible referred to him as a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And great many people were added to the church. And the Bible says, Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So we got our Christian name from the impact of Paul and Barnabas, the impact they made in Antioch. And the apostolic shift commenced right there. And you, you and I are a result of their great partnership. Their combination was a wow. The enemy was truly threatened by this duo. Finally, we see in this chapter how the Lord raised prophets in the church to declare things before they happened. And the Bible says, in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren in Judea. This they also did and sent it to um, to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. The church, as we can see, is still in the business of giving and receiving. They made sure that relief was sent to those who needed it. They lived selfless lives, as we should also live selfless life, catering to the needs of our brethren. Let's quickly dive into chapter 12. Chapter 12 is really loaded. Let's read together. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 1 to the end. Now, about the time, about that time, Herod, note that name, Herod, the king, stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison, <laughs> but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. I will read that one more time. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night, Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Guard yourself, tie on your sandal. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garments and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know that that. What was done by the angel was real, but thought it was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. Verse 11. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together, praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to him. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is this angel. Now Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go tell these things to James 
and to the brethren, and he departed and went to another place. Then as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. But when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down to Judea, from Judea to Caesarea, and stayed there. Now, Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord. And having made blasters, the king's personal aide, their friend, they asked for peace because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man. Then immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Verse 25. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this evening in Jesus' name. Now let's dive into this. See what happened in the early church because of their distraction. Remember what I said about the first chapter, that there was dissension, there was distraction, there was contention. And so the result of that contention is what you see. Herod, the king, stretched out his hand to harass them. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that this pleased the Jews, he went further to seize Peter, and he arrested him also, and put him in four squads of soldiers behind closed doors, and two guards were beside him in the prison. Not that the prison was an empty prison. So you can see the miracle and wonder of God. And you see that this Herod is the same Herod who requested for the head of great prophets in the past. is a principality and power. Is the same Herod, this seat, this title, this prince of darkness who called for the head of John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 14. He said, for Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias. We're talking about John the Baptist now, not John the Apostle. His brother, Philip's wife, and although he wanted to put him to death, he fed the multitude because they counted him a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. So she, having prompted by her mother, said, give me John the Baptist's head on a platter. So he sent and had John beheaded in prison. So you will see that the same repeated with James. Why? Plainly because of offense. And I'll prove it to you. See, Herod and John shared history. Biblical prophecy shows that John the Baptist will return in the spirit and power of Elijah. So the evil personality who could not get Elijah's head in the past through Jezebel. Remember that Jezebel in 1 Kings chapter 19 was also threatening to have the head of um, Elijah the prophet. So this wicked principality is very vengeful. Made sure that he got the head of John the Baptist. So he was revisiting the past. <laughs> because if you remember in Luke 1 17, the Bible says that if we go, we will also go before the Messiah in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So the enemy had a personal vendetta against John, John the Baptist. And so you will see that in the, in the past, Elijah escaped death from Jezebel. Elijah was also offended. If you remember, he went complaining to God and said, I'm the only one left that have not kissed Baal. And God said, I have 7,000 who have not kissed Baal. So get out of your offense and keep moving. But John the Baptist was offended. The Bible says in 1 Kings, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1, it said, And he had told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also. If I do not make your life as the life of this one by this time tomorrow. He, there was a way down the head of Elijah, but he escaped. The kingdom of darkness has a habit of revisiting the past. <laughs> the kingdom of darkness can be very vengeful. The only reason why this evil personality could win this battle this time around was because of the offense 
of John the Baptist. Jesus Christ said, blessed are those who are not offended in me. Please beware of offenses. They expose you to the onslaught of the wicked one. And as we can see, the contention and division in the church led to the ability of Herod to penetrate the church and kill James. This Herod was able to kill James somehow, maybe because he caught the church unawares at first. And then, of course, there was contention and division. But when they rose up to pray, because they saw that it was fast becoming a trend, he, he arrested um, James, cut off his head. And now he had arrested Peter, their leader. <laughs> and they would, um, I bet they figured out, they're wondering, if he took James, killed him, took Peter, arrested him, put him in prison, then who is next? And so this moved them to pray intensely. And guess what? When they prayed, angels showed up. Every time there is a deep intensity of prayer, it attracts a flurry of angelic activity, always activating angelic delegation. Angels respond to our intense intercession. The Bible says in Acts 12, 5, it said, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Let me read that one more time. Peter was therefore kept in prison. So the antidote to imprisonment, the release from every captivity is constant prayer. And the prayer must be selfless because they were not like, oh, it's Peter, who cares? You know, they were praying for him. They knew if Peter, their head was cut, then something is wrong with the body. They started praying seriously. They prayed. The Bible said Peter was in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping. Our Bishop Peter, our Apostle Peter, he was sleeping. He was bound with two chains. Our leaders need prayer. Can you imagine? Peter was sleeping. Peter that was in the prison, that should be, that should have a spiritual unrest about him. He was sleeping. Peter, the bishop of the apostolic church, Peter whose shadow was raising the dead, he was sleeping and he was bound. And the Bible says that the guards were before the door keeping the prison. Now an angel showed up and he stood by him and light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and said, rise quickly. And his chain fell off. Can you imagine? Your prayer can activate, you know, instant deliverance, instant deliverance in the life of another person. They were praying. Constant prayer was offered up to God for Peter. And the Bible said an angel showed up and said, arise. And the chains fell off. The chains fell off. I declare that as we pray today, as we pray on this mountain, chains will begin to fall off, not only from our hands, from the hands of all those who are bound, from those in our neighborhood, so those in our communities, those in our cities, those in our nation, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible said the angel told him, guard yourself, tie your sandal. All of this was happening while the two guards were there. I wonder what happened to those ones. I'm sure they gave them device number. So the Bible said he went out and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel was real. He thought he was dreaming. He was dazed. And the Bible says when they had passed through the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gates that led to the city. I don't believe that the angel led Peter through the physical streets. He led him through the spiritual gates. He led him through the spiritual streets. Remember that the Bible said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord that is mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Do you know that in the realm of the spirit, you can go to the regions of darkness and begin to set captives free? Do you know that in the realm of the spirit, you can go to the regions of darkness and begin to possess your possession? Because that is exactly what the Bible says. The Bible Bible said your gates will not be shut day and night because God knows that we are spirit. The Bible said God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The Bible said flesh is flesh, spirit is spirit. Whatsoever is born of God is spirit. He said the spirit blows wherever it wishes. So is everyone that is born of God. If you operate in the spirit, the Bible said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Come on now. If you operate in the spirit, you will win your battles in the spirit and it will be evident in the physical. So what happened there was that the angel, the, the, the intense intercession of the church provoked the angel activation and it took Peter through the spiritual gates. The Bible said the first and second guard post, they came to the iron gates leading to the city, which opened to them of his own accord. No sound, no voice. Can't you imagine? If they were opening physical doors, people would hear them. But the angel took them, took him out 
And the Bible said that the gates opened to them of its own accord. Hey, the Bible said they went out and down one street and immediately the angel departed from him. I don't believe the angel left him at all. I believe he disappeared from physical sight. Peter himself was dazed. He thought he was dreaming. He was sleeping, remember? So he thought it was a dream. And the Bible said, Peter came to himself. And then he said, I know for certain that God has sent his angel. It took him a minute. And he has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. I declare today that every expectation of the enemy concerning you has come to naught in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Their plan has failed. You have escaped as the bird escaped from the snare of the fowler. The siege is broken. The Bible says that he sees. He said, I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me from the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, John Mark, where many were gathered together praying. So the Lord led him to the place where they were praying. And as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, Rhoda came to answer, and when she recognized Peter's voice, she ran with gladness to go and tell them, "Ha, ah, guys, Peter is here, Peter is here. But they didn't believe. You know, it's so interesting that they were praying intensely, but they didn't even believe that the man they are praying for would be released because he was too supernatural. Honestly, they were all amazed. They were all astonished. The Bible said they told her, you are beside yourself, are you okay? So I don't even know what their prayer was for. Maybe they were just, I don't know, if it was just religious prayer because they didn't know that it would have sought an impact immediately. Did you notice that they said it was his angel? So that means they understood what, that we each have an appointed angel. They believed it was the angel of Peter, not his ghost, his angel. Every born again child of God has an assigned angel. And whenever intense prayer is released on our behalf, or by us, it ushers in the supernatural manifestation of an angel. Remember the intense prayer of Cornelius in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 provoked angelic manifestation. That is the rule of the game. If you want to see angels get into intense prayer, one thing we can deduce from this passage is that their intense and constant prayer unleashed a flurry of angelic activity that not only delivered Peter, but saved the entire church during the time of intense adversity. And so Peter continued knocking. He kept knocking until they answered him. And then when they saw him, they were astonished. They were, they were, they were struck with amazement. And then he, he told them that he had to leave. So he moved to Caesarea and he stayed there. And he told them to give news to, you know, um, he told them to go and tell uh, James and go tell these things to James and to the brethren. So he went to tell the remaining, he told them to tell the testimony to the rest of the elders and he kept moving. So the chapter concludes by telling us those who should have put Peter to death were the ones who died in his place. All those who are consenting to your death, they are the ones who will go for you in Jesus' mighty name. Bible says in verse 20, now Herod has been very angry <clears throat> with Tyre and Sidon. So they came to him with one accord. Having made blasters, his assistant, his personal assistant, their friend. And so while he was making the oratory speech about himself, you know, <laughs> and the Bible said immediately an angel. So it wasn't just the angel. The angel just didn't come and release Peter because the truth is that when Herod was done with his um, party with those people from Tyre and Sidon, he would still go back to the church and start taking them one by one. So God had to deal with him. <laughs> God has to do with him once and for all. And so the prayers of the saint, they were, I'm sure they were praying intensely in tongues. I'm sure they didn't even know the extent of their prayer. Remember, it was their deep intercession and prayer that led to the conversion of soul. Same thing, their constant and intense prayer led to the intercession, to the um, their constant and intense intercession led to the release of Peter. And guess what? Their intense and constant prayer led to the punishment of Herod. See what happened here. The Bible said then, an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten up by worms. Hey, and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. The Bible said, God be for us. Who can be against us? We can see that the principality herald was completely destroyed. 
Remember that for every throne, there's a ruling principality and power in the spirit realm. The same principality wanted the head of Elijah in the Old Testament is the same one who manifested in the New Testament asking for the head of John the Baptist and is the same bloody Herod, bloodthirsty Herod, who killed all the children during the infancy of Jesus Christ and beheaded James. He was out for the head of Peter and he continues his bloody conquest when the watchmen arose and defeated him. Bible says that when we gather, there's an innumerable company of angels. It is true. Hebrews 12, 22 said, but we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable company of angels. Every church has its own angel. Every church member brings in their own when we gather. When you have intercessors in the church, the atmosphere is supercharged for miracles and angelic activity. You begin to witness supernatural supplies, divine healing, divine touch, revelation, open vision, divine messages, and the likes. Angels are real, and they are made to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. They are part of the New Testament church. Finally, the book of the end, or should I say the book of the beginning, shares insights about our angelic delegation. Jesus addressing John in Revelation chapter 1, explained the ministry of angels. He said, the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstand. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstand, lampstands, which you see, are the seven churches. Every church has the lead angel. Revelations 2.1, he said to the angel of the church at Ephesus. Revelations 2.8, to the angel of the church in Smyrna. Revelations 2.12, to the angel of the church in Pergamos. Revelations 2.18, to the angel of the church in Tartera. Revelations 3.1, to the angel of the church in Sardis. Revelations 3.7, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. And we can see that there was also a church in Laodicea. Every church has an angel. In this generation, everyone is running after his own agenda. Isaiah 56 verse 10 said, his watchmen are blind. They are ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yes, they are greedy dogs which are never have enough. And they are shepherds who cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his own gain, from his own territory. Please stop being self-centered. Let's be God-centered. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for the church. Let's pray for the apostolic movement. Because one thing is this, any church who ignores the move of God, the shift to just occur. It looks for the ready neighbor. <laughs> Please do not be like the blind servant that the Lord was lamenting over in Isaiah 42, 19. He said, who is blind but my servant? Or deaf but my messenger, whom I send? Who is blind as he who is perfect? And blind as the Lord's servant, seeing many things but you do not observe. Opening the ears, but he does not hear. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will exalt the law and make it honorable. But this is a people plundered. They are robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes. They are hidden in prison houses. They are for prayer, no one delivers. For plunder, no one says restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will listen and hear for the time to come? I encourage you to stand in a gap. Not only for yourself, for your family. Every time I pray, I pray for my entire family. Every time I pray, not just for my nuclear family, my extended family. Because what, the truth is that when you get delivered and somebody is left without deliverance, they will come and they will come back and ask for your. They will come back and share what you have gotten. So it's best for everyone to get their own possession, everyone to get their deliverance. Because if you are living in good health and your siblings are not living in good, good health, guess what? The increase you get, you are going to be spending it. They will be asking for emergency money for surgery, emergency money for this, emergency money for, for rent. Why? Emergency money for, for, for school fees. Why? Because the deliverance has to be generational. It cannot be individual. And that's why God has appointed you as the intercessor for that family, the intercessor for that bloodline, the intercessor for that city, that community. I encourage you to stay prayerful as we continue to observe this end of year fast. And the prayers cannot be self-centered. As you can see in the Acts of the Apostle, it's about the body of Christ. It's about our churches. It's about our ministry. It's about our cities. It's about God's divine agenda to win all men 
Remember, he gave us the mandate to go into all the nations and preach. So it's not about our selfish agenda this year. It is about the kingdom, and we must be kingdom focused. We must continue to observe the prayer watches. Please, I beg of you, read the next few chapters ahead as we go on this mini break on the weekend, and you will see how the shift occurred in the early church. The focus moved from Peter and the elders in Jerusalem to Paul in chapter 13. <laughs> it started, you know, with a bang. May none of us be replaced in the apostolic move of God in this end time. May the almighty God be pleased with us as we run with the kingdom mandate. It's time for us to pray. Let's begin to give him praise. Let's exalt his name for the sixth day of this apostolic study. Let's bless him. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the sixth day of this apostolic study. Thank you for revealing the power of unity in prayer. The Bible said how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. In unity. The unity is very important. He said how good and how pleasant for brothers to dwell together that in unity. The Bible says two of them shall agree concerning anything. Ah, Father, we exalt your name for revealing the power of unity in prayer. Thank you for showing us how to maintain the power and authority given to the church on the altar of prayer. The Bible says two of you shall agree concerning anything. It will be done. When the church disagreed, there was trouble. Ah, Lord, we thank you for showing us the tremendous things that happen when we pray. The Bible said Peter was kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And the Bible says that angels showed up and the chains fell off his hand. Father, we exalt your name for showing us what happens when we pray, especially in agreement, especially in unity, that they accept our praises, accept all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Our next prayer, we are going to thank him for the revelation of this day. Let's worship him, let's thank him. Thank you for the ministry of the watchmen and the water angels assigned to them. Thank you for showing me the secret of commanding angelic visitation, angelic delegation, angelic activation. Thank you for sitting me with Christ far above all principalities, thrones, and dominion. Each one of us, the Bible said, which he walked, he said the power he wrought, which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him on the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. Every name that is named, including the name of Herod, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. He gave us the same. We are the ecclesia of church, the, of God. The church is the uh, is the dominion, the authority. Remember that Jesus Christ said in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, he said, all power and authority has been given to me. And that power he gave to us to go and make disciples. In Luke 10, 19, he said, I've given you power and authority over the enemy. The Bible said in Ephesians 2, 6, he said, we are sitting with Christ far above all these principalities and powers. So we rule with him and we must gain this understanding. I want you to say, Lord, thank you for sitting me with Christ far above all principalities, powers, thrones, and dominion. And this authority is wielded in a place of agreement, is wielded in a place of unity. I want you to say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the ministry of watchmen. That is what we are in the image of. That's why we have watchmen arise every 6 a.m. Father, thank you for for calling us to be gatekeepers of the nation, watchmen unto our generation. Thank you for the water angels assigned to us. Thank you for showing us the secrets of commanding angelic delegation. Thank you for sitting us with Christ far above all principalities, thrones, and dominion. The principalities include Pharaoh, Athaliah, you know, <laughs> um, Balak, you know, those wicked kings that we saw, the Moabites, the Amalekites, all of those principles about the Edomite, the Bible, remember in Obadiah chapter 1, verse uh, um, 17 and 18, it said that the house of Jacob, he said, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, the house of Jacob shall be a fire and a flame, and the house of Edom, or the house of Esau, will be stubble, and the house of Jacob will kindle and devour them. Those are principalities and powers. What are principalities and powers? They are princes. Go and read my book, you can be delivered. A particular chapter I dedicated to the origin of demons. I talked about fallen angels, and I talk about godly angels. The principalities and powers, the thrones and dominion. Many times when people hear principality, the only thing that they are evil. No, there are godly principalities. Satan just took a third of them 
to make his satanic kingdom, to make his demonic kingdom. And so today, I want you to say, Lord, I thank you for sitting me with Christ far above all principalities, all thrones, all dominions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be thou exalted forever in Jesus' name. I want you to pray and say, Lord, forgive me for permitting any form of division in, my, in our midst. I want you to pray, make it personal, and then corporately we pray, Nehemiah troop, Lord, forgive us for permitting any form of division in our midst. Just like we see the early church, we plead the blood of Jesus against every demonically engineered contention levied against us as a ministry or as a family. We pull down the wicked devices and bring to judgment every tongue. The Bible said they will gather not by me. Everyone that gather for our sake, they will scatter. The Bible makes it clear. It said no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against us is condemned. Therefore, we pull down every wicked tongue. We bring to judgment every wicked tongue. We silence every tongue wagging against Nehemiah troop and against our family. We declare none of their weapons against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask for supernatural discernment. Each time there is division, each time there is contention, we receive supernatural discernment in Jesus' mighty name. We receive supernatural discernment. When there is discernment, you know, it will quell the fire of division. It will quell the fire of contention. I want us to pray and say, Lord, forgive us for permitting any form of division in our midst, for breaking ranks, oh God. Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. The Bible said the house divided against itself cannot stand. We plead the blood of Jesus against every demonically engineered contention levied against us, oh God, from the kingdom of darkness, levied against us as a ministry or as a family. We pull down the wicked devices and bring to judgment every wicked tongue. None of them will prosper against us. We nullify their effect. We ask for supernatural discernment, the ability to discern, the ability to discern in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to pray and say, Lord, teach us not to discriminate among people or nations as we preach the gospel in the coming year. You will see that the early church, they were discriminating. They said they were only preaching to Jews. In fact, when Peter went to minister, can you imagine, he went to minister salvation, he took Jesus Christ to the um, dying world, and they contended with him, they disputed with him, it was serious. Can you imagine, I want you to pray and say, Lord, teach us not to discriminate among people or nations as we preach in the coming year. Give us the grace to bear witness to the lost, to the broken, to the rejected, help us to reach the unreached, the unchurched, especially those outside the four walls of the church, the LGBTQ community. You know, I was looking at the news the other day, and they said that, um, <laughs> one of the things that they said was that they are building fake families. This LGBTQ community, they are forming fake families because many of the transgender, the transgender, they call themselves transgender women. So men turn into women, you know, they said they've been, re they've been rejected by their immediate family members. So they are banding together to form false families and they are having all kinds of wicked parties and bringing Beyonce to come and perform in those parties. It's so pathetic. I saw it on ABC News. You can Google it in your own spare time. It is very sad. I want us to pray. But you know, one of the barriers of us ministering to these people is how Sometimes we are confused on how to relate with them. I want us to pray that the Almighty God will give us divine wisdom because God already knew that they will exist in our generation. And remember that nothing is new under the sun. They were in Sodom and Gomorrah. I want us to pray and say, Father, help us to minister to these people. Give us wisdom. Give us all of the anointing. Give us the prophetic insight to minister to this one. The apostolic power, the apostolic insight, just like there was instruction given to Peter to go to the house of Cornelius, and the same revelation was given to Cornelius. There was instruction given to Ananias to go and meet with uh, Paul in, uh, you know, the street called straight in a certain person's house. I want us to pray and say, Father, give us prophetic insight. Help us to reach out to these people. Help us to reach out to the LGBTQ community. Help us to reach out to the homeless, to the imprisoned, and all those from other religious conviction. Father, do not let us write anybody off. Help us to minister to them because those are the people you have truly called us to. Ah, Father, Lord, we pray. Do not let us recycle members in our churches. That is effectively what the church is doing. Redeem member going to um, New Covenant Church. New Covenant member going to um, Victory World Church. Victory World Church member going to Free Chapel. Recycling of Christians. That's not what the gospel mandate is. 
That's not what is the gospel mandate is to actually go and bring the homeless, uh, the imprisoned, the those who are rejected, those who are unchurched, those who do not know the broken, the lost, the prostitutes, the gay people. Those are the people that God is calling us to bring. And it will take a lot for us to be able to swallow our pride and do it this year. I want us to pray for that grace, exceeding grace. I don't know if you know any gay person. Have you ever witnessed Christ to them? Do you even have the courage to do so? I want us to pray and say, Father, give us the grace to witness. Uh, give us the grace to witness mazile kitata tata e ribo suteli abasu le kitali abasenegede ori mo sute ki abazada ki abazada ba ya e rebe kitani bro soto li abazada ba ah father lord give us the grace to love father e zamika teli abasu le kete ah father lord help us not to discriminate oh god but to love all those who love who are lost in jesus mighty name I want us to pray and say, Father, let this fasting season pay me tangible dividends. In divine visitation, you will see that Cornelius prayed in chapter 10. An angel visited him. You will see the church prayed. Angels showed up. The church prayed. Angels killed Herod. I want you to pray and say, Father, let this fasting season pay me tangible dividends. Let it pay off greatly. Ah, Father, show me angels, oh God, heavenly vision, angelic instruction, supernatural mind manifestation. Lord, show me visions of angels. Grant me the understanding of my role as a watchman. Help me to walk in the authority needed to defeat principalities, powers, thrones, rulers, and dominions in this age and in the world to come. Help me to watch with vigilance in the place of prayer day and night. Help me to watch in the place of prayer. The church was praying fervently. The Bible said continuous prayer was made for Peter. That means they didn't break their prayer chain. That means they were praying every hour. That means they did not stop praying. Can you imagine? Intense prayer. I want you to say, Lord, let this fasting season pay me tangible dividends. Let there be all of other tangible evidence, all of other change in my life. Let there be divine visitation, angelic vision, Lord, heavenly vision, angelic instruction, supernatural manifestation. Lord, show me visions of angel. Grant me the understanding of my role as a watchman. Father, Lord, let this fast waken me, quicken me, activate me as a watchman. Help me to walk in the authority needed to defeat principalities and power strongs and dominion in my community, in my city, in my nation. Oh, Lord, I pray. Oh, Lord, give me the understanding to walk in that authority. Oh, Lord, I pray. As the make it, help me to Watch with vigilance in the place of prayer. The Bible said, who is dumb but my messenger? Oh, Father, do not let me be dumb. A dumb person is someone who cannot speak. The Bible said they are dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Ah, oh, Father, Lord, do not let me be dumb. Hey, take it, tell ya. Ah, Father, do not let me not sleep. Help me to be vigilant. Wake me up this fast, oh God. Father, quicken me, activate me. In Jesus' mighty name, our prayer number six, you are going to say, Father, Lord, Help us to preach the gospel of the kingdom without reservation, no reservation. Ah, help us to preach the gospel on the plane, on the train, in the bus, at work, at school, on the streets, in the grocery shop. Help us to be your faithful witness. Give us the grace to declare it, whether it is popular or not. Let us open our mouths with boldness in the midst of adversity and persecution. Let a great number be added to this company. Let a great number be added to the church. The Bible said, now those who were scattered after the persecution, remember that the enemy meant it for evil, but God he turned it around for good. He said they are rose after Stephen's death. They went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. You know, there was still segregation, but later they spread it. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. And if you look at the subsequent verses, they said that some were from Cyrene and some were from Cyprus. I want us to pray and say, Father, he said they minister to the Hellenists. Father, Lord, help us to preach the gospel without segregation, without reservation, without judgment. Give us the grace to declare it, whether it's popular or not. Let us open our mouth with boldness in the midst of adversity and persecution, let a great number be added to this company. Let a great number be added to this church. As such as needs to be saved in Jesus' mighty name. The be part of that prayer, we are going to say, Lord, raise many men and women of noble character. The Bible said that this man was of noble character. The Bible said Barnabas was a good man. He was full of the Holy Spirit. Remember the description of the um, 
of the deacons that were appointed, the same thing, the man Matthias that was that replaced Judas, the, 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 the thing, the common thread to all of these people that were appointed, they were people of character. I want you to pray and say, Lord, raise men and women of noble character, full of the Holy Spirit, full of faith from this altar of prayer. Number me among them. Did you see how they numbered their name, Prochorus? They numbered them, Philip, Stephen, and they were mentioning them, proselytes. Even some of them were newbies, but they were men and women of character, those who had the Spirit of God upon their life. I want you to pray and say, Father, raise men and women of noble character, full of the Spirit and faith from this altar of prayer. Let everyone see that we are truly Christ-like. The Bible said that Barnabas, departed for Tarsus to seek Paul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And so it was, they continued to teach great many people for a year. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So they didn't even call them Christians in Jerusalem. They didn't call them Christians in Samaria. They didn't call them Christians in Judea and all the other places. They called them Christians in Antioch. When the Gentile church was launched powerfully by the apostle Paul, I want you to pray and say, Father, let everyone see that we are Christ-like. Christian just means like Christ, followers of Christ. Father, Lord, let everyone see the fruit of the Spirit in us. Let them see your noble character reflective in us on this altar. Let our influence break racial barriers and national boundaries. Let our influence cut across uh, racial barriers and national boundaries in the name of Jesus. The borders of nations, the borders all over the continent. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Use us, O Lord, Father. Raise men and women of character from this altar. Lord, we commit our Ignite conferences into your hand, starting with the Atlanta conference in February and the Abuja conference in March and Lagos, O God. We pray for Johnny Messes as we go from one location to another. We take authority over the geographical regions. We plead the blood of Jesus. We pray that your word will come with evident power as we gather in Jesus' name. The Bible said, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell down as upon us from the beginning. Then I remember the word of God saying, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift he gave us when we believed. He said, who, who am I to withstand God? And when they heard these things, they kept silent. So that means they could not argue with him anymore. They glorified God. Then God also granted the Gentiles repentance to life. I want us to pray that what will happen in our meeting in Ignite Conference, people will be turning over to Christ. Drunkards will be leaving their drink. Addicted folks will be leaving their addiction. Pro those who are prostituting their life will be leaving everything behind. All those who are living compromising life will turn to Christ in holiness. It will be a change. Ah, Father, we pray. Those who are you those who are, are are living in contention with their spouses will turn around there will be a major change of heart the acts of the fathers will be turned to the children the heart of the children will be turned to the father people will serve the lord all those who are bent traumas will become in they will fall in love with jesus christ with intensity there will be true salvation encounter and there will be evidence miracle there will be signs and wonder father we pray the bible said the kingdom of god is not in word alone but the demonstration of spirit and power we pray that there will be an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Those who are not speaking in tongues will receive baptism of the Holy Ghost. Those who are not born again will receive Christ. Those who are born again will receive a fresh infinite. Those who are already speaking in tongues will receive the multiplicity of tongues. Ah, Lord, we pray for the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word of prophecy, discernment of spirit, deliverance, oh God, healing, oh God, evidence, signs, and wonders, oh God. Let there be open heaven. We take authority over the geographical boundary. We declare as we fly from one continent to another, as we fly from one nation to another, as we travel within all of the cities and the nation, we pray for Johnny Mercy. We pray for angelic watch in Jesus' mighty name. Father, silence every harassment against anyone in this ministry. Silence every harassment. The Bible said about that time, Herod, the principality, stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer offered to God for him by the church who released him, sent angels, and the Bible said chains broke off. I want us to pray. Father, silence every harassment against anyone on this altar, in this prayer ministry. Harass the harasser. 
Let the prayer turn the table against our adversary today. Let our prayer, our intense prayer during this fast, turn the table on our enemy. You said you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You said you be content with those who contend against us and save our children. Father, Lord, everyone, all of other associated and those who identify with this altar, Father, deliver them. Send your angelic delegation to rescue everyone who is stranded, maritally, physically, financially, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, professionally anyone who is stranded oh god father send your rescue team your angels your law enforcing angels our ah, father your warrior angels our ah, father we command the chains to fall off right now we command the chains to fall off right now in the mighty name of jesus let the chains fall off in jesus mighty name our prayer number nine father lord as we move out in the apostolic mandate in the year 2024 let the gate of nations attend to us let the gate of nations begin to open Open to us uh, with one accord. The Bible said when they went past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of his own accord. I want us to pray and say, Father, let the gates of this ones open to us. Everyone who needs to be in our conference, if they need visa, give them. If they need tickets, give them. If they need all of our documents, give them. If they need immigration release, give them. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Let the gates of nations open to us in Jesus' mighty name. The principalities and powers, let them bow to the supremacy and authority of Jesus as Neymar Truth shows up. You know, Father, in any community, in any city, in any nation, let the gates of nations attend to us. The Bible said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up you everlasting doors that the king of glory may come in. We decree the gates of salvation, the gates of restoration, the gates of immigration, the gates of admission, the gates of promotion, the gates of marriage opens to us, gates of fruitfulness, scholarship, divine acceleration, divine opportunities open in Jesus' name. And the channels of the spirit open. The breakers anointing goes ahead of us in the name of Jesus as we take the nation for our Yeshua. The Bible said there is no speech, no language where their voice is not heard. That Lord, you said their line is gone out through all the earth and, and their words to the ends of the world. You said in them, you have set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. Father, we pray, let the gates of nations attend to us as we take the gospel to the ends of the earth. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, let your warrior angels strike down the evil personalities of our city. Mention your city. Our Lord, let the angels of the Lord strike down the evil personalities of our city, just like Herod was brought down in the time of Peter in Jerusalem, in Judea. Let your warrior angels strike down the evil personalities of our cities and our nation in Jesus' name. We demolish wicked altar. We pull down the stronghold of wickedness holding anyone bound. We plead the blood of Jesus. Our Father, we pull down all of the wicked personalities, all of Father, our Lord in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States of America. Our Father, Lord, particularly in Lagos, Nigeria, in Abuja, Nigeria. Father, those places will be going. Father, we pull down the stronghold Oh God, oh God. Ah, the spirit frustrating the people there. We demolish wicked altar. We cry against the altar. We declare altar, altar, altar. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Ah, Father, we pray for a fortification of angels. Release your legion of angels to defend us. We declare as we pray, there shall be no backlash against any one of us, against us as individual, as a family, as intercessor, or as a ministry. We demolish wicked altar. We say, Lord, I say, Lekete, in the name of Yeshua, the name that is higher than every other name the Bible said in the name of Jesus, every name must bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We put down the stronghold of wickedness holding anyone bound, especially on this altar. Lord, we pray. Let your warrior angels, oh God, go and pull down the wicked personalities of our cities, of our nation, especially where the Ignite conferences we hold in Jesus' mighty name. Father, let your word grow and multiply in our churches. Let your word grow. Many churches have lost focus. Many churches have lost vision. <laughs> Many churches, what they are planning is end of year party right now, instead of looking for souls. I'm not against end of year party, don't get me wrong, because our our churches, our social um, references are, is a place of 
um, communi communion, is our community, is our place, is our support system, is our place of relation. We share same values. So it's a place of relational value, is a place of validation, is a place of acceptance. So I'm not against the church having fun. In fact, I enjoy, you know, fellowshipping with people of like mind, but we must not lose sight of that. You know, Jesus Christ was going to the house of Zacchaeus, the house of Matthew the Levites, the house of Be um, Lazarus at Bethany, the house of Simon the leper, the house of all the wealthy men that people said is a drunkard and he likes to party. He went to the marriage at Cana of Galilee. So our Lord is not against us socializing. But when it becomes the main focus of the church, when it becomes, you know, about friendship Sunday, <clears throat> Um, um, banquet Saturday, um, um, as a picnic Sunday is dangerous. I want us to pray, or you know, when the church just starts to do a uh, uh, benevolence, benevolence, benevolence as their outreach, no more preaching of the gospel, no more laying on of hands, no more casting out of demons, no more discipleship classes, no more uh, baptism or, of water and of the spirit, no more, you know, raising disciples, no more preaching the gospel of truth, no more teaching about the character of the spirit, something is wrong. I want us to pray and say, Father, let your word grow in our churches. Let your word grow. Let your word thrive in our churches. Let your word multiply in our churches and in our cities by reason of this fast. As we pray, as we intercede, we are praying selfless prayer. We are saying, Lord, let every godly church get their vision. Let every godly church. We are not talking about the altars of demons or the synagogue of Satan. We are talking about godly churches. All the godly churches in this city. All the godly churches in 100 mile radius from me. Our Father, Lord, in this region. I pray, oh God, let the churches, oh God, receive divine visitation, angelic visitation. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus uh, over all the churches, oh Lord, Father, and our city. Let the word grow and multiply exceedingly. The Bible said, but the word of God grew and multiplied. The word of God grew and multiplied. The word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem where they have fulfilled their ministry. Uh, let's pray that our churches we fulfill ministry in the name of Jesus. Nehemiah will we fulfill our ministry. Our churches, our local assembly, we fulfill their ministry. He said, and they took with them John Mark. I want us to pray. Our Father, Lord, let many return from the, from this altar, energized to fulfill destiny. There will be fulfillment. We will fulfill our personal agenda from heaven and our kingdom, our corporate agenda as a ministry. Our churches, oh Lord, Father, we fulfill in the name of Jesus. Help us to fulfill our ministry in Jesus' name like Paul and Barnabas, help us to fulfill our ministry. Help us to fulfill our ministry. We pray for Neymar to pay our ministry and everyone associated with this prayer altar. We scatter all the designs of hell against anyone. We break all the structures of hell concerning the work of our hands. The work of our hands will prosper. We cover every family, every destiny and all our children with the blood of Jesus. Jesus. No more we attack our children. Not in their sleep, not in their dream, not at play, not at school. Whatever they are doing, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. Our children are covered with the precious blood of Jesus. As families of intercessor, no backlash against our children. The enemy will not go behind our back to attack them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus. We pray for Neymar to prayer ministry and everyone associated with this altar. We scatter the designs of hell. The Bible who said they frustrate the devices of the crafty so that their hand cannot perform their wicked enterprise. Every wicked enterprise against us, every wicked machination against us, we pull it down in Jesus' mighty name. We cover every family on this altar. We cover every destiny on this altar and all our children with the blood of Jesus. We declare the gates of us shall not prevail against us. The gates of us shall not prevail against us. We plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Father, we bless your name and we worship you in Jesus' mighty name. We call for destinies out of the waterless pits. Uh from all regions of captivity, we assume destiny, we assume marriages, we assume families, we assume finances, immigration letters, immigration cards, personal residency cards, stuck in the regions of darkness. We call them forth, we declare a release of visas, of diplomas, of scholarships, of certification. Those who keep writing exam over and over again, you have written one particular level of exam three or four times, it's not normal, it's supernatural. We pull it down, we pull down the stronghold, we call for destiny 
destinies out of the waterless pit. We call for destiny out of the cage. We declare that the snare is broken. We say that the chain fall off. Uh, we declare in the mighty name of Jesus, the chain fall off in Jesus' mighty name. Is the Father, we declare in the mighty name of Jesus, supernatural advancement, a spiritual stamina, a ketelia basa, professional advancement, a mazile kitalia basulegede. Our father, we call for destinies out of death. That wasteland, out of barren land. Our Father, Lord, we pray. Even those who have seen themselves in marshy lands in the dream, in desert land in the dream, oh, those who are walking aimlessly in the forest, we say in the name of Jesus, their destinies are redeemed from these dark places. Their destinies are redeemed from the regions of darkness. We declare from right, right now. We declare from now on that we begin to see the pathway because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible said, you will show me the path of life, but if in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand pleasures forevermore. We declare fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore. You show us the path, you will show us the path of life. No more waterless speed, no more wandering around in destiny, no more going around in circle, no more back to square one syndrome, no more rocky chair syndrome, no more motion, no movement. Father, we declare Declare lateral movement, forward movement, upward movement, speedy movement. Oh, Father, we declare we assume destiny. Oh, Father, from the valley of dry bones, from the places called the dark regions of the earth. In the name of Jesus, marriages are rescued, families are rescued, children are rescued, finances rescued, immigration paper rescued, visas and diploma. We pay the blood of Jesus. Whatever is hanging, we declare that they are released in Jesus' mighty name. Certifications released, academic advancement, professional advancement, spiritual stamina. Our Father, we declare nobody's spiritual glory will be captured in the regions of darkness. We call for glories and effectual forces from the darkness, from the dungeons of darkness. We call them out. Uh, the Bible said that there was a man that God sent ahead of Israel. He said his name was Joseph. They said they bound him with chains because they knew that he was great. They bound him with chains. And the Bible said the word of the Lord sent for him. He said the king, the word of the Lord tried him and the king sent for him and made him lord and ruler. Father, we declare the word has come today. He said he sent his word and deliver them and deliver them out of all their troubles. Father, we declare every effectual force, every glory buried in the dungeons of darkness. I call it out right now in the name of Jesus. I call for buried destiny. I call for buried destiny. Ah, come on, Neymar, to join me in prayer. Ezama Sabadaka, we call for buried destiny. We call for effectual glory from the dungeons of darkness. Ezama Yakata, ah, we declare that heads are lifted up in the name of Jesus. No more buried destiny. No more captured destiny. Not to see that the enemy was threatening the principalities and power. He threatened and he took the, le the leader, the head of the early church. He imprisoned him. He bound him. But you know what? When prayer was made, just like the prayer we are making right now, that man was released. The Bible said angels showed up. The Bible said they brought him out of the dungeon. The Bible said they released him. The Bible said the gate began to open for him. We declare, Ozama glories are released. Effectual force released. Our destiny released from the dungeon of darkness, from the prison of the wicked. From the sixth region of darkness, we cancel evil decree of darkness. Against any individual on this altar, we can decree. Even if we have traded, you say you will deliver the lawful captive. We plead the blood of Jesus. Maybe our parents traded. Maybe our ancestors traded. Maybe we ourselves traded. Maybe we were like Esau, the prophet person who traded his birthright. Let mercy prevail. We declare no weapon formed against us from the realm of darkness shall prosper. No weapon formed against us against our spouses or children shall prosper. We dismantle their devices in Jesus' mighty name. We decree our children are for signs and for wonders. The Bible said in Isaiah 8, 18, I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. We declare our children are for signs. Our children are for signs. They are anointed for exploit. They are God's battle axe. Our families are fortified as a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are marching forward with the gospel mandate. We do it together 
as a family. I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, declare. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We are marching forward with the gospel mandate. We are unkillable. Hmm. We are uncrushable, we are unmolestable, we are unstoppable. In the name of Jesus, we are God's warriors in Samatalia. God's warriors in just surround us at all times in every situation. We enjoy 24-7 angelic protection. We enjoy 24-7 angelic surveillance. We enjoy 24-7 angelic covering in the mighty name of Jesus. We enjoy precision. We enjoy direction. We enjoy instruction. We enjoy protection. I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonder. Lord, we pray for any ministry, experiencing demonic contention, any ministry associated with Nehemiah, experiencing contention, whether it's a local church or a para ministry like this one. Father, we pray. Ah, Father, Lord, ah, bring them out of the waterless pit. Ah, we pray for any ministry expressing demonic contention and adversity. Ah, Father, Lord, let them rise out of the pit, oh God, the waterless pit. We decree that the gates of earth shall not prevail against our ministries and local assembly. We ask that you raise a new breed of intercession in our churches. The Bible said constant prayer and intercession was made for Peter by the church. An angel showed up. The chain fell off him. He came out of the prison. I want you to pray. Our Father, raise a new breed of intercessor in our churches. Let our churches not slumber. We ask for an outpouring of the spirit of grace and supplication. We ask for an outpouring of the spirit of revelation. Lord, stir up a zeal in the body of Christ. Stir up a zeal. Stir up a zeal in the body of Christ. Stir up zeal. Let our churches wake up from their sleep. In the name of Jesus, our Father, I spread your love that the wing of prayer and the tentacle of prayer and release the angels of God for activation of every church and every ministry in this community in this zip code our father lord in this region in the name of Jesus let the churches be quickened. Let the intercessors arise. Let the evangelists arise. Let the apostles arise. Let the pastors arise. Let the teachers arise. Oh Lord, we pray. Oh Zima Sapata, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, oh Lord Father, let them arise. The miracle, oh our Father, the helps of ministry. Our Father, Lord, we pray. Stir up zeal. Stir up zeal. Our Father, we release angelic warriors at the gate of our city. We speak angelic activity into our neighborhood. Angelic activity into our neighborhood. Ezame Sabe Kelia Bazulekita or Rama Sade Getelia Bazulekita. Our Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Kedebe Seleke Dereba Yabada Bada or Rimo Suta. E canto Selekia Masulekete. Angelic or not other activity. Our Lord in our neighborhood. Our Father, let our neighbors begin to see vision of Jesus Christ. Let our neighbors begin to see visions of Jesus. Let them begin to see vision of angels. Let our neighbors begin to see vision of the angels. Let the mayors, the governors, the executive, oh Father, the state representative, the senator, let them begin to see visions of you. Let them begin to see visions of you. Our governor, our president, President Biden, our Kamala Harris, so oh God, our Father, Lord, President Bola Metinubu, our Father, Lord, this vice president, oh Lord, Father, Yes, Ketima, we pray in the name of Jesus, O Lord Father, all the governors, O God, and the federal governments, O Lord Father, agents, the senators, O Lord Father, the representatives, and Father Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, let, let them receive angelic visits, <laughs> let them receive angelic visits, O Lord Father, like a rod, let them receive angelic visits, we speak angelic activity over our community, over our neighborhood, over our city, over our nation, we pray for divine takeover of the affairs of our government, let the angels take over the ruling council of heaven, let them take over our school, the affairs of our school. Let them take over our businesses from wicked principalities and power. We all see dark forces. We shut our habitations of cruelty. We enthrone righteous angel, angels, O Lord Father. Our Father, Lord, you sit in the congregation of the gods, uh, the ruling council of heaven. Let them take over our city. How uh, we call for to Lord Father, our angels like Archangel Michael. Father, the appointed angel over Israel. We call for the angels all over our nation. We call for the angels of the Most High over our city, over our nation. Let your righteous angels rule. Let them direct the affairs of our nation. The righteous principality, the righteous power, the righteous throne, the righteous dominion. Let them rule over our city. In Jesus' mighty name, Osama Katelia Basada, it's time for our communion. Take your bread. We are going to pray and say, Lord, 
by this table, we ask for a release of our possession from the region of darkness. We ask for a release. My glory cannot be captured in the region of darkness. My diploma cannot be captured. Some people, they have diploma. They are taking this around for employment. But because this be hung in the region of captivity, no matter what that person does, they can't find job. <laughs> because they have, they, have, they have nailed it to the wall of darkness there. You know how you have wall of uh, honor. You have a, a wall of fame. They have put some people's diploma on wall of shame. If you're in doubt, go and read the book Regions of Captivity by Anna Mendes. I'm not making this up. And I know that you know in your heart that I'm talking sense, spiritual sense. I want you to pray and say, Lord, we ask for a release of our possession from the regions of darkness. If there's any area of your life that has suffered greatly, so I can bet something is happening in the regions of captivity. Ask for a release. Ask for a release. Is it your health? Is it your finances? Is it your marriage? Is it your profession? Is it your glory? Is it your, your stature? You know, some people's spiritual stature in the physical, they are giants. I've seen the devil do that to many people. But in the spiritual, they are midgets. The enemy nailed them down, pushed them down. I want you to declare in the name of Jesus, I will not be suppressed by the powers of darkness. I will not be suppressed. I ask for a release of, of my possession from the regions of darkness right now. By the blood of Jesus, everything that pertains to me, let them be released in Jesus' name. Lord, by this table, we send your warrior angels on errand and lift up the unchallengeable name of Jesus over every lawful captivity. We decree our promotion, our children, our blessing, our breakthrough, our scholarship, our destiny, our ministry, our health, our progress released speedily ah, to us as this year draws to a close. Father, you said better is the end of a thing ah, than the beginning thereof. You said, though my beginning may be small. Ah, yeah, get it, get it, get it, get it, yeah. Maybe at the beginning of this year, you didn't have this revelation. But at the end of this year, the Bible said, through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. Oh, ye bate, ye. He said, though my beginning might be small, but my latter shall greatly increase. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough, evident miracle, notable miracle, tangible miracle. In the name of Jesus, as this year closes, we speak to lives that have been killed by wicked principality to be released now. Just like Peter was released from Herod, we declare every life that has been captivated. We declare a release in Jesus' name. Destiny captivated, marital destiny, vocational destiny, professional destiny, ministerial destiny, oh, financial destiny, oh, Father Lord, entrepreneurial destiny. Let there be a release in the name of Jesus. We command that all destiny held down before now. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Come out of obscurity in Jesus' name. Come out of obscurity. The Bible says, says thou a man diligent in his business. He will not uh, operate in obscurity, but he will stand great before kings and not before me men. We bring men and women free from communal prison, from covenant altar, from communal altar, from deity altar. We break all mental barrier, shatter every spiritual manipulation through mass and social media by the blood of Jesus. Every addiction to pornography, every addiction to nudity, every addiction to perversion, every addiction to satanic music, to satanic lore, lore the pipe piper of Hamelin, everyone that is mesmerizing, oh Lord, Father, the young generation, our millennials, oh, our young ones, oh God, are the youth, oh God, the children, the teenagers, the young adults, the campus students, our Father, Lord, even the grown ones, so God, some married folks are addicted to pornography. We break the yoke, oh God, the mesmerizing power on mass and social media. We break the yoke right now by reason of this communion. We know when you said you invested power in the communion, you are not playing, Lord. And so we snatch marital destinies. Uh, uh, yes, out of the hand of the enemy. We snatch mar marital destinies out of the hand of the enemy. We snatch all of our, the destiny of our children out of the hand of the enemy. How about that we claim our financial increase? We command it out of the hand of the enemy. We take our wealth out of the banks of the wicked. Remember, I've said testimony before that in the realm of the spirit, I went to a bank and they were giving me coin. I'm like, Nibo, I don't want coin. No. I want real money. And then the whole place scattered with alarm. I want us to pray. They are like, oh, today I came to collect. I want you to pray. We take our wealth out of the bank of the wicked. My money cannot be tied down in the bank of darkness. Ah, we will not be afflicted by generational or communal infirmity. I reject it. My family will not be afflicted. If you go and read the book of Anna Mendes, uh, Regions of Captivity, they were praying for a pastor. But God showed that by revelation that that pastor was already tied down. The same bed, the same drip, the same um, apparatus in the realm of the streets. 
And they tried, they've killed him. Demons were chanting over him. And she saw that in the realm of the spirit and she was able to break him free. And immediately she prayed that prayer. The man was released from the hospital. Can you imagine? I want us to pray. We will not be afflicted by wicked demons. We will not be afflicted by, by, by demonic affliction. We will not be, no arrow, no weapon. That's why the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us is disgraced and condemned. We renounce the ruling forces of darkness in our geographical region. They will not impede us. We are free indeed. The Bible says when the soul said free, is free indeed. We are free by the blood of Jesus. By reason of this communion table, we are free. He said he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy. This is the table of the Lord that he used to defeat the enemy, that he used to silence the enemy. We are free. We are healed. We are rich. You better command it. We are rich. I am rich. I'm very blessed. We are blessed. We are lifted. We cannot be down. We are empowered. We are we are boldness. We are anointed as God's firebrand. We are anointed as God's firebrand. I am anointed as God's firebrand. I am bold. I am empowered. I am lifted. Make it personal. I am blessed. I am rich. I am healed. Yes, Bamanakata. I am free indeed. Why? Because Christ paid the price. Sir. Christ pay the price. Father, we exalt your name. We worship you. And together in agreements, we take the bread, we give thanks, and we eat it. As we break it, we eat it in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Eat your bread. And in the same manner, we take the cup and we drink in Jesus' name. Drink your cup. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we magnify Lord, we exalt you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We give you praise for the sixth day of our meeting. This, this day, we are grateful. And for the eighth day of our fast. Thank you for increasing us. Thank you for multiplying our strength. Thank you for answering our prayer. Thank you for giving us revelation knowledge. We are so grateful. Accept our thanksgiving and adoration. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our day six instruction. At the midnight or the 3 a.m. watch, go before the Lord and pray intensely in the Holy Spirit for at least 30 minutes. Pray in the Holy Spirit for at least 30 minutes. Ask for the fire that moved the church to pray for Peter's release and the activation of angels in Acts chapter 12. Ask for the same anointing, the ability to pray without fainting. Repeat the same for the next three days. So you are going to do it today, you do it tomorrow, you do it on Sunday. 3 a.m. watch, 30 minutes intense prayer. Do whatever you need to do. If you have to turn on your worship, your intense worship, your deep worship, your shakare music worship, or Lucy Oyeko worship, or Nasanebasi worship, or Hillsong, whatever you worship with, just turn it on, put it in your ear plan, start praying in tongues. If you need to turn on your Bible app, do it 30 minutes. That is how to activate power. Make sure you obey the instruction. It's one of the easiest ones that we have, but it is also intense. So make sure you do it so you can build spiritual stamina. Because from next week, you are going to be blasting in tongues. You are going to be taking things to God and interpreting it. You'll be downloading mysteries and secrets in Jesus' name. You want to see angel, then you must pray. And so 30 minutes is the smallest you can pray. <laughs> Some people I said for at least 30 minutes. Some people, theirs might be one hour. So make sure you obey this instruction for the next three days. The Lord grant us speed as we do so. Let's give thanks to God one more time for the privilege to come on this altar. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Say, Lord, we thank you for the privilege to come. We thank you for the privilege to come and pray. Thank you for instructing us for the next season. Thank you for instructing us for the next level. Thank you for the things you have shared with us on this altar. Ah, yes, our eyes are blessed to see these things. Father, we thank you. Ah, we are grateful. Our heart is overflowing with joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the peace that passes all understanding that you have poured on us. We are so grateful. With a heart of gratitude, we say thank you. Thank you especially for bringing us to the 12th month of the year. We are so thankful. We are so grateful that it be thou exalted and glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Um, praise the Lord, hallelujah. From the first day of this fast, I've asked 25 people to join me to raise 25,000. Praise the Lord. I was able to cast my seed today. I did it with so much joy. Hallelujah. I was dancing. I was like, thank you, Lord. This is what you do. You know how to do this. And I give you, Lord, all the praise and glory. And so I'm begging you, 25 people, to join us as we raise 25,000 because it's kingdom mandate. 15K we want to use for our normal benevolence and 10K for our Ignite conferences. We're already speaking to the halls. We're already talking to the venues. We're already talking to musicians in the 
in, in USA, in Nigeria. We're already making plans. So please join us as we take this gospel mandate to the ends of the world. You can give to us Ignite or you can give to us the benevolence, right? Ignite seed or car seed. Or if you want to split your seed, you can put both, which is what I did. To God be the glory. The Lord empower you as you do so. And for everyone who has responded, we have $5,000 now. And remember, we are splitting it between the two. So we don't have enough money for one car. We don't have money for maybe half, <laughs> half a car or a third of a car. The Lord help us as we, you know, complete this mandate and bless a family. We are going to cause a family to smile. And I know everyone will smile on us in Jesus' name. For all those who have given, the Lord multiply, increase, and bless you mightily in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, if you want to show that seed, you can zell it to that number. You can also zell it to Neymar Trooper Gmail. You can send the PayPal to Neymar Trooper Gmail. Or you can do GT Bank in Nigeria. The Lord bless you as you do so. Our end of year fast continues. It's for 21 days, even though we are meeting Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And we are studying the Acts of the Apostle in view of what God has in stock for us in the coming years and apostolic year, and I'm sure of it. Please join us and don't forget to invite your friends and your loved ones. If you'd like to receive our daily ministry update or share your feedback, testimony, or prayer request, send us an email at name or to text us on WhatsApp at 630-936-8868. Let us share the name out to benediction. I hope you have been blessed. Let's share the name out to benediction together. I am blessed with the blessing of the Father God Almighty. I am blessed with the blessing of the of heaven above in Christ Jesus. I am blessed with the blessing of the field. I am blessed with the blessing of the deep within. I am blessed with the blessing of the breast. I am blessed with the blessing of the womb. I am blessed with all spiritual, material, and marital blessings this season. I am blessed when I go out and when I come in. My blessing exceeds that of my ancestors and all those who have gone ahead of me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. See you on Monday morning. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord strengthen you through the weekend as we continue our fasting. Bye for now.